Welcome to the Jack and Around Show, hosted by two-time ACM award winner, Jack Ingram. Coming up in two minutes, Jack welcomes host of the Sunny Side Up Morning Show on Sirius XM's Willie's Roadhouse and singer-songwriter, Sunny Swinney. In the description are links to access this episode on your favorite audio platform and to watch on YouTube. Also provided below are guest and Jack bios, their website and social media links, and a link to access jackandaroundshow.com, where you'll find the most up-to-date news, upcoming release schedule, and back catalog of episodes. Finally, don't forget to check out Sonny's new record, Married, Not Alone, by visiting sunnyswinney.com. Again, links are in the description. Before we begin, here's a one-minute preview of today's episode, followed by a quick word from Jack on the behalf of our sponsor, Lone Star Dry Goods. I'm pretty amazed right now just looking at you in the last couple of weeks when i've seen you it's like something came over you over the last couple of years that's it's called just- freedom i'm very opinionated it's probably why i got dropped from a record label because i was too opinionated but then that makes me realize how unopinionated other people are manager is a verb if you can't make up for the percentage that you're taking from me and bring me opportunities that are going to make up for what i'm paying you then get the fuck out of my face god i hope you never get mad at me huh <laughs> said i hope you never get mad at me <laughs> The way you talk, I'm like, yes. I mean, Sonny, I, I think you have, you got, you, there's a lot of, the, of this woman issue with you. Because I'm so sensitive to the fact that women get shit on a lot. But it's not. It is. No, it, it is. But, okay, what? Jack, you can have all these women, mo- these movements, you know, chicks with pics and all this stuff. But until the men that are our counterparts stand up for us, which that's where the problem will. Well, it also takes people like you consistently showing up well, and saying, hey, man. That's why I'm not giving up. That's not cool. In 2012, I got dropped from Big Machine. And I told my mom, I'm going to quit this business. She's like, you need to get down on your knees and you need to pray. So I gave myself 14 days. On the 14th day, 5 o'clock, Bob Romeo from the ACMs, who I've never spoken to in my life, calls me. Welcome to the Jack and Around Show, available on your favorite audio platforms and in video on YouTube. Visit jackandaroundshow.com for the most up-to-date show information, including links to access the show's catalog of episodes. I'm your host, Jack Ingram. The Jack and Around Show is presented by Lone Star Dry Goods, a curated collection of handcrafted quality goods with a truly unique Americana vibe. Visit Lone Star Dry Goods in person right here at the World Headquarters in historic downtown Abilene, Texas, just west of Fort Worth in Willow Park. We're online at LoneStarDryGoods.com. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited to break up your little sausage party over here. Seriously. What do you mean? There's always guys on here. I've heard like three girls. I'm so I've Kelly. I know. I heard it. I listen to your. I listen to this. Who you else do, do really we have? good. I love the fact that you just bullshit. <laughs> I do. It's literally. It's all my we favorite. got. I know. But I'm saying like. I'm glad to be one of the chosen few that's a born with the right, different chromosomes. I haven't seen you in a long time. I know. You've Very been long. Bu- you've been busy. I have. How is it running a radio show? How? Who let me do that? That's what I need to know. What do you do? Who let me do that? Jeremy like, Tepper, I guess. Jeremy, he let me, he literally gave me one training session and then goes go on and then like now i have my own radio Is it three show. hours or what six monday oh through God. friday what time 6 a.m to noon Can't what are you playing all country it's willie's roadhouse you like your doors i do all this stuff is new i love this i'm so happy for you this is cool matt are you doing all the camera work for jack yeah then some <laughs> the toe <laughs> They call it Matt Pavoto. Who was that? I can't remember who it was now. I was like, uh, well, it's Pivoto, but um, yeah, Pavoto works. Yeah, I've been called worse. You want some Taylor Swift picks? No, I do not. I have some. You're rolling, right? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're rolling, baby. <laughs> okay, let's go. All right, let's talk first about the radio show. Okay. How long have you been doing it? Three months today. Do you love it? I do. It is a opportunity that I obviously did not see coming. And I'm not a real religious person, but I let everyone go on my team, um, not on a whim. I was going to do it prior to COVID, but then COVID happened. It was just kind of like, you know. 
So you so, had a manager, a booking agent. All under the publicist. same roof. All under the same roof. And one of the people that owns that company is like one of my soulmates in this business. What company? Um, True Grit. And Arthur is one of my soulmates. Arthur. Pin Hallow. I love him. So long story short, I let everybody go um, for, for just reasons that need not be discussed. I just, I did, I needed a change. You've, you've been there. So I needed a change and, um, and I did it just like, I've already got this record done. I'm going to, am I just going to do this by myself? I was questioning, am I going to put this out by myself? Right. Am I, am I going to wait? Or am I just going to say, no, we're, let's do it, figure it out, which is what we've always done. Right. All of us as a collective, we just figure it out. It's kind of how it works. Yeah. So nobody I us, nobody really asked us to be in this business. No, so. I did not ask myself to be in this business. I promise you that. Right. So anyway, I just said, figure it out, Sweeney. And so I fired everybody, or you know, let it walked away, whatever you want to call it, and um, chose to do it on my own, and went on faith that something good would happen. And three days later, remember we had the freeze here in Austin. Um, what they call that? Apocalypse or something, snop, snopalit, snockalypse, something. Something like that. I was stuck at my sister's, not stuck there, but I was at my sister's and then I just said, I'll stay here. So I stayed at my sister's during that and I went up to the store. It's when I was still smoking cigarettes and I went up to the store in all the ice and bought cigarettes. And, um, and while I was at the store, barely, um, I got a phone call from Jeremy Tepper, who I haven't spoken to according to my text messages in 10 years. Wow. And he's so like, he called you out of the blue? C- complete. Snowpocalypse? Snowpocalypse. What did I call it? I Snockalypse. <laughs> um, anyway, and so Jeremy's like, hey, is this still Sweeney? And I was like, yeah. He's like, hey, it's Tepper. And I was like, hey, what's up? He's like, hey, I got a question for you. Can I call you real quick? And I was like, sure. So he called me. And I'm still sitting at the gas station with my cigs, you know, whatever. And um, he goes, would you be into doing a radio show? And I was like, duh, because honestly, you know, uh, J.R. Schumann, you know, um, I don't. he did radio. You've met him, I'm sure. But he asked me to do this before. And then a couple other people have asked me to do this exact thing. And I've always said no, because I don't like the music. At different radio stations? Um, mostly on XM, Sirius mm-hmm. XM. Um, but it's it's because I didn't like the music and I couldn't. I couldn't make myself where they want you to do like the highway and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. And it's just not me, you know that. And yeah. I kind of did that a little bit and it's just not me anymore. And so I was like, <laughs> I was like, okay, that's just not me anymore. It's just not me anymore. And, um, you mean ever was ever it, it was never, but, but I mean, I, I wouldn't take that time back, you know, that I wouldn't either. So, um, but anyway, so Jeremy's like, would you be into it? And I was like, hell yeah. Like no question, whatever you want, I'll do it. If, if it's for either of your channels, I'm in. And he's like, okay, well, I'm going to run this by a couple more people. And then we have to run it past Willie and run it past everyone. I was like, holy shit. So Willie's like my boss, which is like, ult- I mean, Jeremy's the program director. Does he have, does Willie have any hands on? I've never, no, I've never talked to him about it, but I, I've never talked to him in regards to this. I've met him before, but not because of Willie's Roadhouse. But, um, right. but anyway, it's pretty crazy because this is the kind of music that I just love. I love this kind of music. It's that that is your wheelhouse. That is me, yes. And I mean, I grew up in Northeast Texas. Like we only really listened to country, you know, especially at my mom's house. I mean, there was like Tom Petty and Stevie Nicks and that's Neil country. Young. Well, now it is hell. I that's mean, that's country. countryer than anything now. <laughs> <laughs> that's as country as it gets. Mm-hmm. Tom Petty. I mean, he honestly is that he's country comparatively now. You know what I mean? Like that's just insane. He's way more country than. Don't even. Yeah, I mean, well, there there is some great shit going on in country music right now. Like, there's total Morgan Wallen, there's Luke Combs. I dig that. There's there's a lot of I would say, um, from when you and I were, I call it my time on the artist protection program. Yeah. Um, but when I was in the artist protection program. There were no women doing anything besides Taylor, you know, and that was a totally different demographic. And um, she um, was, you know, she was what, you know, 
Scott focused on a lot. And of course, um, and with with good reason. Absolutely. I mean, she she's honestly, I love Taylor. I, I, I love her music. Like her newest record, it's got some amazing songs on it. And I feel like the age, it's like dating someone that's 15 years younger than you. When you're 50 and you date someone that's 35, it's different than when you're 35 and you date someone that's 20. Very you know true. what I mean? Very so true. like her her music has um it's it's gone more we've both gone like I can relate more to the things that she sings about now than when she was 15. Yeah, and when she was 15 those songs were perfect for Absolutely. a 15 year old. I if I would have been 15, I've said that before. If I would have been 15 when that would have come out, it would have she would have been my favorite artist. Yeah. Hands down. And like all my nieces and stuff and nephews really they love 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 her and have since you know they've grown up with her they're the same yeah. age as her now you know well that's that's what scott always yeah said to me he's like man you just i got i got a hold of you too late yeah which made we'll perfect sense yeah we'll figure out a plan yeah i mean uh katie oslin didn't have a hit till she was like 41 you know what i mean 80s ladies yeah i mean um lucinda williams are you kidding me She's the coolest thing that's ever walked on the planet. Yeah. You know, and she was a late bloomer as far as that goes. Like, I don't, I think age is so stupid. I think age is a total number. How old were you when you were Big Machine? Um, Like 20, no, 30, 29 or 30. Yeah. So, I mean. I remember you telling me. Oh. Well. You good? Are you good? I'm good. We're all good. We're all good. We're all good. We're all good. Is my coffee in your way? No, ma'am. I like this setup. This this podcast brought to you by Sexy Hair. <laughs> Big sexy. <laughs> okay. For your for your uh this is I know this is not advertised um by big sexy hair but this isn't my typical hairspray i usually use tg bedhead mm -hmm. but um i flew yesterday i've been i don't even know where we are except that where are you I know coming from i was in um nashville at ama week or ama americana week all week <laughs> and um i have got stuff everywhere like i have i just have stuff everywhere okay so i forgot my hairspray and i forgot my saline solution so i had to go buy hairspray and this was all a good find and I'm from East Texas, so I do carry hairspray. Looks good. Thank you, Jack. Great Appreciate hair. It. Appreciate it. Thank you. So I remember you telling me a long time ago about your big machine days, how they used to like count your calories. Oh, God. I mean, okay. When I got dropped from there, uh, well, first of all, this was the best thing. You know how like they buy clothes for you and- they like tell you what to wear and this, this is cute. And they give you a stylist and all that. Um, Did you get Sandy? No. I mean, I worked with Sandy, but I mean, I, I got like extra curricular or whatever you call it. Like we brought in a couple different other um, people yeah. for style, like clothes, styling and stuff. Sandy did my hair a couple of times and makeup. And I, I love Sandy. I, I literally just talked to her last week. I love Sandy. Too. I love Sandy. Borchetta. But it was like hip. Nails on a chalkboard when she would do my hair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was awful. My hair has, I, my hair is really thick. So like you really have to be bad at hair to make it look honestly like terrible. So she has long hair. And so she was really able to do mine. Like I did like how she did my hair. Um, makeup, I'm pretty particular. So like I didn't like my makeup ever. Anyway, <laughs> side note. I used to walk in and Sandy... You know, three o'clock hair and makeup or whatever for award shows or and I would walk in, I go, Sandy, look at me. And she go, Yeah. And I go, This is how I want to look. <laughs> <laughs> exactly like this. Okay, when you get all done with all your stuff, I want to look exactly like this. Right? Yeah. She goes, Why do you need me? I go, I really don't. But, <laughs> but you know You're a guy. We gotta do this. I mean, like I understand like clothes and stuff, like needing to to like look cool or look a certain way, but like you're a dude. That's the one thing about being a dude that I think would be the best is you don't have to look any different. That actually pisses me off. Like, you know, y'all can roll out of a bunk 
and literally go on stage and you look the exact same as when you went <laughs> off the If I did that, you would be like, oh, look at the little look. Look at the little troll look, up on stage. Look at that poor girl. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be like, what is happening on there, on the stage there? Who is that? You know, it's so unfair. Y'all piss me off so bad for that. Like, that's, Well, you're a dude. Well, okay. Mentally, yes, I'm a dude. Um, but there is, there is definitely um, downfalls to having to be a woman, to put makeup on and look a certain way because there's so many standards that go with it. I agree. And then people think, you know, unsolicited that they can comment about you, you know, it's horrible. That's why I'm such an asshole about angles, Matt. Sorry. Like I was like, <laughs> I was like, what is this going to look like, Matt? This is like maybe going to be like a really bad angle. But he goes, I'll get a wide angle lens. And I was like, is that a fat joke? <laughs> <laughs> I think you look great. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Jack. So what's going on? What changed? So, um, I let everybody go and had some- During the pandemic? Right after, like eight months ago. And, um, and then got this radio deal kind of rolling finally around May, uh, June. Actually, on my grandpa's birthday, June 24th, that's when I started. And then um, made a record in Dallas. With Paul, Married Alone? Yeah, with Paul Cawthon and Bo Bedford and Jeff Sines. And, um, with the Texas Gentleman? Yeah, two of them. And then Paul. Bo. Yeah, Bo He's Bedford. He's the main guy, right? Bo and Jeff, yeah. Jeff is... Did you hear about the accident? Um, The guy that got electrocuted and lost his arms in Dallas? That was Jeff. <laughs> no. Yeah, a week... What happened? A week before he was... the He was the engineer on our record, and the week before he was supposed to start mixing, he got electrocuted in his front yard in Dallas. And lost both of his arms. Like, lost his arms. And wow. it put a different, like, spin on, um, obviously, everything in a different, like, perspective and, like, had a reality check like that. And um, How did he get electrocuted? He um, got electrocuted from a downed power line in his front yard. Wow. Yeah. He told us, um, you know those lighters that have, like, the metal cover on them? You know, like a, like your like mom a, probably had yeah, one, like a big like lighter. Like the 70s. Yeah. He was holding one of those and the voltage was so high that it just arced over to it and electrocuted him and he had necklaces on and a metal belt and it electrocuted all of them and he was on fire in his front yard. It's tragic as shit. Like I can't even imagine. And his, his fiance, well, she was his, you know, girlfriend at the time. They're now engaged. A week prior, he showed a text message that he had written to her that said, hey, I got these fire blankets. This is where I'm going to put them. Three days before he caught on fire. Three days. So she knew exactly where they were. And she literally, the fire blankets, put them on top of him while he was on fire in the front yard before they called the ambulance. Three days before is when he got them in the mail. Wow. Yeah. Put some perspective on something, you know, pretty quick. Absolutely. But anyway, so my album ca uh, came out Friday and we're starting our tour for the record release shows. And we have a full band now. We have a steel guitar, everything. So I heard that country bands are supposed to have a steel guitar. <laughs> well, you, <laughs> if it's you need right. to have a fiddle in the band. Well, I, I know, but <laughs> most, I wish most I had a utility player. player. <laughs> I wish most steel players can play fiddle. Mm. I wish that I could have both. I wish that I could have a utility guy because I need a banjo. I need an acoustic on some songs. I mean, eventually I'm going to have like a Lyle Lovett size band. That's what my goal is. It's large, not big. Yeah, the large band. The we large just, band. I played a show with him last week. I had to follow him at, at an Americana show. I literally was like, where in Nashville? I know where uh, the East Side Bowl. So there's a station there called WMOT. You know, you know Jesse Scott, the Mott. Yeah. So Jesse put put all that together, and Jesse's like, oh, and you're gonna follow La Love It. <laughs> it's like, why'd she do that to you? Because it would be a good crowd, I guess. I don't know. Was it good? Yeah, it was awesome. It was awesome. She's awesome. Jessie's the best. Yeah. Like I've known, her, you've probably known her longer than I've known her, but I, 
I've known her for a really long time. We've both known her since back when she was at XM. At the night before in the it was 90s. even yeah, when, even, she, when it was XM. Yeah, before it was serious. I had a show on her, her channel. That's right. Jack's tracks. That's right. It was fun. Yeah, I forgot about that. Dang. Where the hell does time go? <laughs> I'm serious. It goes here. It goes here. <laughs> goes into the Botox needles. It goes here. <laughs> Time just stores on you. <laughs> Kill me. <laughs> oh Where are you God. living now? Are you living in Nashville? I don't live anywhere. I've got all my stuff in a storage unit. And um, my permanent address is my sister's address in Dripping Springs. But um, I don't live anywhere. So when you're in Austin, you stay at her house? Mm -hmm. And where do you stay in Nashville? My mom's house. My mom she lives in there. Nashville? Mm -hmm. And then I can go to East Texas and go to my dad's. Or I can go to any of my friends' houses. I've got a friend that lives in New York. I stay at her house sometime. I really don't live anywhere. It's the only time in my life where I've ever just truly been a gypsy and like it is the best feeling I've ever had. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty amazed right now just looking at you in the last couple of weeks when I've seen you. It's like something came over you over the last couple of years that's just- It's called freedom. It's really cool. It's really cool. Um, it's freedom and it's making choices for myself and I've never made choices for myself, ever. I mean, I have. I thought I had. Yeah. I'm very opinionated. It's probably why I got dropped from a record label, because I was too opinionated. But then that makes me realize how unopinionated other people are, because I know that I still wasn't fully opinionated. Right. You were like, holding back. Now, I'm not holding back. And like I feel like I don't owe anyone. You got to drop from a label. I don't owe anyone anything. It got you... Yeah. A couple divorces. A couple divorces. That's never going to happen again because I'm never getting married again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm keeping my last name this time. I've had my I've had my passport. Oh, that's a song. Oh, the Pistol Annies have it. I'm keeping my last name. Well, I'm getting, it's called like, I'm getting my last name back or something. But. Fuck the Pistol Annies. <laughs> <laughs> Sonny Sweeney has a song called, I'm keeping my last name. Uh, well, okay. So if you start. With your first passport, that's your real name. Then you get married, you have to change it. You get a second passport. Then you get divorced, you got to change it again. Then you get married again, you got to change it again. Then you got to change it back. I've had five passports. Do you know how annoying that is? You, well, I, I can only OCD. imagine. Well, I have OCD really bad, and it would have been nice to have kept all of the countries I've gone to in one passport. <laughs> <laughs> because then I could, I know that sounds cheesy, but I love traveling. And I, I like, love those stamps. Oh my God. We just got back from Europe. We went to five countries. Guess how many passports I've had? Probably one. One. Yeah. That sucks. And I don't have to carry hairspray. <sighs> so unfair. God, so unfair. I'm telling you, don't you agree, Pivoto? <laughs> no. No? Yes. Yes, I do. Yes. No doubt. Everything you say is correct. He is not even listening. He's not listening. He's checking his He's email. He's checking his Instagram over there. <laughs> Way to go, Pipto. So what's touring like with a radio show? I bet that's badass. Like, the fact that you're playing all outside of Texas. Not that... I mean, playing Texas is fantastic and you can do it for the rest of your life, but... Texas is hard for me. Is it? Mm hmm Why? Um... You know, there's a couple markets I do okay in, but um, it's really hard for me. Um, all of all of y'all, like Randy, Kevin, um, Jason, Boland, y'all have all been really cool to me. And like everybody's let me, Wade, they've let me open for them. Do like, you know, I've got I've got to do a lot of opening slots in Texas over my career. Um, but headlining dates are really hard. In Texas, I don't know why. I don't know if it's just like legit the boys club. And I mean, I used to have a t-shirt that said Sonny Sweeney breaking up the sausage party. I remember. I literally had a t-shirt that said What does that. that mean? It's just like all dudes. But what is sausage? sausage what is sausage reference? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Come on, opinionated. <laughs> it references the Phallic, um, the phallic uh, symbols, okay? The Johnson. Yeah, the Johnsons. That's what it references. And of course- No, my, I knew that was a rhetorical. I know that. And so my mom and my dad, <laughs> my mom and my dad are like, do you have to have t-shirts that say that? And I was like, yeah, I do. 
hell yeah. And then I put them on sale and they sold out the first weekend. So I was like, well, I guess I'll keep this around for a while because I'll do anything to make money and pay my bills, you know? So <laughs> so now I've got these shirts and um, actually we were considering bringing them back because a lot of people have been, those are like 15 years old. Yeah. And um, and I I feel like it adds like a dimension um, because it's silly. Like it's just a silly thing to have those. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. Like, I don't think someone cool musically would ever have those shirts, you know, but, but also like, I don't think Jason Isbell would ever have shirts that say like breaking up the sausage party. You know what I mean? Like he's, his wife might. Yeah. Yeah. She's pretty funny. Yeah. But do you know what I mean? Like, oh, I don't yeah. think anyone cool would have those, but at the same time, I think that it, it shows that I have some, what of a personality if you don't even know me. And then you have to always, um, I will always think like disarming people as a woman, like, I've never understood this on stage. If I'm say I'm opening for you. Okay. I'm doing a show with Jack Ingram and your fans stand back. Like I have like, you know, the herp or something. And they're like back. Oh my God, there's a woman on stage. And then as soon as you come on stage, it's like brawls are being thrown on stage. Do you know what I mean? If you have your shit together and mm -hmm. you're, and you're really good mm -hmm. and you show up and you know, you know where to plug in, mm -hmm. you could tune your own guitar. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. It makes a huge difference. Like this is actually pretty funny. So Brennan Lee is one of my best friends and we do a shows every year at the end of the year together because we never see each other. So we've planned these shows and we've done them for years. We do them all the time. And when Brennan and I show up at a venue, you know, Brennan's a badass guitar She's a player. Stud. Total badass. Like she play stud. outplays most people I know. And um we show up at venues and the sound guy, oh God, here's two blondes with two guitars. I'm so sure. Like, and then and you're like, neither of us are really blonde. I, <laughs> I've been dying my hair <laughs> since I was like 15. So thank you. Anyway, Jeff. Um, anyway, so we always, we have a, we have a deal and we show up and the guy's a dick and I go, go ahead and go first. And Brennan starts just rattling off like stuff and it changes their tune like that. Absolutely. Changes their tune like that. I don't play like that, but because it's two women on stage. And then at the end of the show, it's usually like, oh, that was really fun. You guys were good. Yeah. It's just shocked. <laughs> you guys were good, question mark. Right. You know? And um, it's it's mind blowing. But there are, I mean, there's a reason that people think that. So. There is a reason. But also. That's what I mean. Like, if you can plug in. Yes. Dude, you I You know where, how to work a DI box. Know how to. <laughs> I ran my own sound. Yeah. I played in Austin, Texas, <laughs> at every venue that would let me bring my own PA and right. set that bitch up and put it in my car and drove it there and carried them. That's why I have back problems because I carried in 12 meter or whatever those big ass, the speakers with the handles. I'm only 5'4". Like it was taller, you know, half as tall as I am. Like I'm carrying it. Nobody offered to help me, which I don't care. But then I, you know, set it up, put it up on the little speaker stick or whatever Ran my own sound. I mean, I feel like you have to learn how to do that and then have a degree in PR. Like, you have to learn how to do your shit. And if you know how to do your shit, then you shouldn't have any problems delegating it as the time comes. See you know what I mean? Yeah. There's so, no, I can back a trailer better than anyone in my band. Yeah. That, I, I, that, that, that used to be the most fun for me is backing the trailer. Oh, my favorite is when the guys, like, at venues, countless times. First of all, it's my trailer. And my van that I own and I pay for. Right. And they go, y'all going to let her drive that? Y'all going to let her drive? Uh, you mean, am I going to let them drive this? <laughs> Why don't you shut your little mouth and let me back up, please? And then they like walk alongside me and go, uh, well, scoot it over a little to the left. And then I cannot tell you how many times I've rolled a window up in someone's face. Because they're like giving me directions. I don't need directions. I've been backing a boat up since I was seven. Like get it's out of long view. Yeah, I mean, that's what we all have to learn how to do our stuff. And I'm not saying like, oh, I'm so badass. But like, I know how to do everything for my business. That's not. It's like driving a stick. If you don't know how to drive a stick, you shouldn't be able to drive a regular car. Because what happens if your friend's drunk in high school? That's what my mom said. And all they have is a standard and you have to drive. Then how would you leave? So my dad made us all learn how to drive a stick. My dad made my sister learn all that stuff too. Yeah, I mean, you have to. So if I had kids, it would, you know, I would make them learn that. But I have a dog. No kids. Okay, so let's talk about Big Machine. Okay. How was it? Um, so 
the I've never ever as you pick up a Taylor Swift pick. I love Taylor. I do. I really do. Um, she's really pretty. Um, she is like. <laughs> look at this picture. Even even on a she's really pretty. <laughs> even on a pick. Are you kidding me? Like she's gorgeous. Like yeah. this is the smallest picture. But anyway, I do. I do think she's she's really great. Um, so how many singles did you have? Three. Where'd they get to? Um, the first one. Well, okay. So there's. Let's go back. To, hold on. How did you get signed at Big Machine? That's what I was fixing to tell you. Oh, well. Well, no, I was thinking in my mind how I was going to say that. Um, so I was down in Texas doing my thing, minding my own business. And I got a MySpace message from a little gray head. Didn't have a picture. And it was Scott. Yeah. And he's like, hey, my name's Scott. I own a record label. And I, I would like to talk to you about giving you a record deal. Meanwhile, I've got all these friends actually going to showcases looking for record deals. And I'm like, this is not real. Like, this cannot be real. I called you. I don't know if you remember this, but I called you. Mm -hmm. um, I also don't know if you rem remember this, but my sister yes. married a friend of yours. So Zach. <laughs> Her stepsister was married to Zach Hofstner. So like total leather lifetime ago, but I knew you from back then. And so um, I called you or messaged you or something was like, what do I do about this? You know, I know that you have a record deal with this guy. I didn't know what a record deal was, Jack. Like I did, I had no, I wanted free beer. Like that was the only right. reason I wanted to get in the music business. Not the only reason, but I mean, it was definitely It's a, a good reason. It was a perk big time. And, um, and so I called you and you were like, well, call him back, at least call him back and talk to him. And so I called him back. Was I on the label then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it was you and like Justin Moore and Taylor and yeah. Jimmy Wayne. Yeah. And that's it. And, um, and Danielle Peck. That's it. So. I watched her put on her eyebrows. <laughs> yeah. It was so, it was just so strange, man. <laughs> I was like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Guys are so weird. Out of all that, uh, that's what I remember the most. I remember going through this airport security. <laughs> Took her like 20 minutes to get through security. And she's over the gate putting on her eyebrows. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I call Scott and I said, hey, um, you know, What's up? And he's like, well, I got your, <laughs> he goes, I got your record. I have no idea how he got my record. I don't even know who the guy was. And um, he got my record and it was in an unmarked envelope. Swear What's to. What's it like 2004? No, five? six. Five. 2005. Um, swear to God, I have no idea who the guy is. And he said, well, I'd love to come. Me and my wife, my wife loves your record. And I have to basically fight her to keep it. Could you send me another one so that I can have one? Because she literally won't let me have it. So I said, sure. Where do you want me to send it? So I sent it to him. And then he called back and he said, um, we would love to come see you play if you're ever going to be in Nashville. I said, oh, that's weird. I'm going to be in Nashville in like a month. And, you know, I'm going to come there for the first time and I'm going to go and do this Billy Block show. He said, OK, we would like to come. So they Tuesdays. came. Tuesdays. Yeah. So they came to this show and I got a record deal. <laughs> and I didn't uh, that's that what, easy. That's what I have to. That's what I, that is my, how I got a record deal. That is not normal. I am aware of that. And I'm grateful for the opportunity. And I know that, that I have had a lot of friends that have gotten really pissed because I've acted very blase and nonchalant about it. But truthfully, that is what happened. I never wanted a record deal. I didn't know that I needed one. I'm grateful for having the opportunity though. Did you have a manager at that time? Um, if you would like, maybe like there was a guy that was somewhat managing me. Mm -hmm. Um, but I mean, not like, not like what I would consider a manager. Now a manager is a verb. I feel like the word manager is a verb and not a noun. And if you can't like, if you can't make up for the percentage that you're taking for me and bring me opportunities that are going to make up for what I'm paying you, then get the fuck out of my face. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like, because that is not going to work. God, for me. I hope you never get mad at me. Huh? <laughs> Said, I hope you never get mad at me. <laughs> the way you talk, I'm like, yes. Well, okay, I'll manage you. <laughs> well, <laughs> and for free. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pay you. 
I wish I could find a manager that would pay me. But I feel like that's why I feel like, like I can, I, I can manage myself and delegate stuff to people that I trust, which is exactly what I'm doing right now. And it's all getting done. If, if not better, oops, my phone's on. That's my hair alert that my new products are in shipping. Oh, good. Oh, yay. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, but like I delegate stuff to people and then it gets done. Yeah. We just had all my pre-sales. I just had my friends come over and my friends helped me package all my pre-sales. Kicking it old school. I don't need merch people. Why am I going to, I paid them way less than I would have had to pay a company 12% to store my merch. I'll store my own damn merch. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'll I'll store your merch. (laughs) I will pay you to let me store your merch here. (laughs) Do you have a big garage? I could totally store my merch here. You could. Speaking of, I sat down the street in one of your neighbor's houses that had one number different because Matt gave me the wrong address. And I sat in their driveway in front of their big playscape for about 20 minutes. You thought I have... You thought I had a playscape? I literally was like, to myself, I was like, how old? I was trying to Google like a (laughs) jungle gym, you know, like a, and I was like trying to figure out how I was Googling, how old are Jack Ingram's kids now? I was trying to think why he must, he let, he just let himself go. (laughs) He's got like 25 year old kids and he's still got a playscape. (laughs) I go out there and play on it. (laughs) It was like a little tree. I got stuck in the slide the other day. That'd be hilarious. Oh, uh, that's funny. <laughs> mm. So anyway, so then I waited around there, and that was what I called my time at the Artist Protection Program. And uh, again- How long were you there? Over six years, and I made one record. Three singles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but- What the, was the- The first five years were me writing, and- What was the hangup? Scott- He just, you know, didn't think it was time, didn't think it was time, didn't think it was time, didn't think it was time. They put out my record. They re-released my first record that I made, the licensing deal. And that's the part that pisses me off. It was licensed. They still have it. And now they've sold it to that other company and they won't give me it back. And everyone's like, well, just re-record it. I'm sorry. I'm not Taylor Swift. I don't have the money to just go and re-record my album. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, It's beside the point. Yeah. So then my second album came out and now they have all of those sitting in a storage somewhere and they're trying to charge me $7 a unit. So I will not buy those. So I did re-record the three singles on a live album and now I just print those because I'm not going to pay $7 for a concrete album, which is my big machine record. Um, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. $7,000 for a thousand of them? That's no. Insane. It's insane. CDs are like irrelevant Plus, now. I. If you gave me a CD right now, I wouldn't have anywhere to play it. I literally have nowhere to play it. I literally do not. I know. I don't even know why we ordered any this time. Like we did. We ordered a lot of them. And I don't think we did. When I when we put out the Marfa tapes last year, I don't think we had physical product. By the way, that was a beautiful project. Thank you. Beautiful. I mean, absolutely beautiful. Miranda's like, she's literally one of my heroes. Like as far as just like doing shit her own way. She's, I know, I love her. She's phenomenal. Yeah, I, I think she's great, and and I'm so proud. I just actually told her yesterday, like, holy shit, can you believe that you're going to have a show in Vegas? Like, that is. Incredible. I gotta get out there. I, t- I well, more. I wanted to go the opening weekend, um, but my record's coming out the same, and I knew it as soon as we announced that. She literally like it was the same like time period. It's like, damn, that's not going to work. But my birthday is in the beginning of December. I'm going to try to go then because I love Vegas. I love gambling. Mm -hmm. I don't have a gambling problem, but I do love Vegas. (laughs) (laughs) I will say that my debit card, my ex-husband used to take my debit card away. Like before we went to the casino, he would say, get out your money now and let me have your debit card. Because I do have like, it's like I black out and I'm like, oh, just, I'll just, I'll just go get some more cash out. And like, I can't do that. Right. You know, like I can't. So he would make me get cash out first um, and then give him my debit card. <laughs> so. So where are you touring? Oh, Everywhere. I love that. Did you really just oh, do that? Cut that out. No. Okay, okay. That stays in. <laughs> She's going. Uh. <laughs> well, okay. I recently got bangs. And so I'm having to like hairspray them down a lot. 
So I wouldn't, I don't have a problem with that. Well, you're a guy. I don't expect you to. It pisses me <laughs> off. You wear a hat everywhere you go. That's why I wear hats all the time. I don't even know why I have hair. You're honestly. the queen of the trucker hat for sure. Yeah. Like I love hats. I, I love them. And this is why, that's why I asked you, is this going to be on camera? Cause I got to figure out how to she fix my bangs. You wore a hat. No, because I wanted to, I wanted to fix my bangs. This looks cute. I like it. Thank you. So do you, when you do your radio show, do you do the whole like talk into the song and like do you do it in real time or do you you just go, hey, this is sunny? No, like I edit. I have to edit everything. So um, there's a back cell and a front cell. And there you go. There's lingo that go with it. Come you know? on. <laughs> and so front like front cell is front cell is like if I go, oh, that was Jack Ingram with Biloxi. With, which is my favorite song of yours still to Thank this day. You. I love that song. That was Jack Ingram with Biloxi. Hi, I'm Sonny Sweeney. You're at Willie's Roadhouse on Sirius XM. And now we're going to go into Matt Peavto's version of Biloxi. Biloxi. <laughs> 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 so, yeah. So that's a front sale is the Matt Peavto. Part. How long does it take you to do it? So, like when the queen died, I had already pre-recorded that. Um, so I had to go back and like, edit some of it because mm -hmm. I was also traveling. We were, we were in five countries in a month and every single day we were in a different town. So I was on like 13 airplanes in a month. And Where then, were you playing? Um, we played in Scotland and England and Switzerland Wow. and Spain. And then we went on a vacation in Italy. So you in the band, um, uh, me and Harley, my guitar player. And, um, we is Harley your he's my partner right on yeah and my guitar <laughs> player so I don't advertise I don't advertise that you know that's yeah, fine um so um anyway but we went to Italy for about a week and we like drove around oh my god in like Tuscany I've been to Italy before but like I I was there and it was a heat wave mm -hmm. and I remember I didn't have the right clothes. And so I had to wear the same clothes every single day. Cause I only had one tank top with me. That must've been terrible. It was tragic. It was awful. I mean, it, it was bad. <laughs> I know that you are laughing at me, but you have a wife and a daughter. So like, I know you get it. I do. Um, but like, that's totally dramatic, right? Yes. That's dramatic. That's yeah. It's terrible. And so shut up, Jack. <laughs> It's awful. <laughs> I can't imagine having only jeans and a t-shirt. <laughs> Serious question. If there's a female in the band, would it be fair to say there's a high probability of another band member dating her? No. Your um, bass player. I have a bass player that's a female. And Joanna, you know, um, Janae sings with me on big shows. And she's a female. Um the big joke about it is this was my favorite thing that's ever happened. Swear to God. I was in Memphis at this club that I was playing. It was my show. And they feed you prior in the bar area. So I was in there eating a burger, minding my own business, drinking a beer and eating a cheeseburger before my gig. And this guy comes up to me and he's talking, to, you know, men just, you know, hitting on you or whatever. Just I. I'm like, it does not even phase me. And I'm like, um, yeah, it's cool. Hi, I'm glad you're here. And I don't have makeup on, a hat on, didn't know it was me. And um, he goes, anyway, I know, I know the band. I know, I know two guys in the band. I was like, cool. And I acted like, you know, I didn't He didn't too. know you? No, he did not know me. He's like, I'm gonna introduce you to him if you want later after the gig. And I said, oh, really? Who do you know? Who, you know, he goes, oh, the drummer and the bass player. It's like, cool. Is it, uh, and I said their names. And he goes, yeah, how do you know? And I was like, because they're my employees. <laughs> and he goes, what? And I was like, yeah, those are my employees. And I took my hat off and I was like, hi, I'm Sunny. You're here to see my show. And like, it is so comical to me that people, men or woman, man or woman, have that, there's like that line of, I don't know what it is, but there is that line. And unless you are as big as Miranda, you know what I mean? Like where you're just a household name. It's like, it's like all the, the, the smaller acts than that. There's some kind of hang up with the fact that, that 
you know, you're a woman and you must be the, you must be someone's girlfriend or you must be the merch girl or you, you must be, you know, a band hoe. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So the best thing that ever we were dying, but, uh, probably shouldn't say this just cause it's tacky, but I don't care. Um, we were laughing about it one day and someone said, you know, are you sleeping with anyone in the band to another girl? She goes, yeah, you better watch out. I might fuck you too. <laughs> 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 because that's like the general, like, just like mindset, you know? I mean, you, y'all do that. You just, by nature, you see a woman hanging around a group of dudes and you automatically, just not you, I'm saying just people, people just think like, oh, she must be his girlfriend. And uh, Brennan went into a music store once. I'm trying to think if that's true or not. Yeah, it is. I it, don't know. If maybe not you, because you're in this business, but like if you're just like, if you, okay, if you're eating at a restaurant mm -hmm. and you see clearly five people, six people walk in and they're, they are in a band and you know that just, you can just tell if people are in a band or not. And they walk into a restaurant and there's five guys and a girl you either automatically in your mind, you never think that girl's the lead singer. You either, uh, I do. You do? If she looks cool. Mm, maybe. I mean. But also, I mean, I don't Sonny, I think you have, you got, you, there's a lot of, the, of this women issue with you. With everyone. With everyone, every, all of my friends. You seem friends, to be hyper aware of it though. I am because I'm so sensitive to the fact that women get shit on a lot, you know? And women don't get, we get half the pay y'all do. You know what I mean? Oh, I don't know what you mean. Here we go. <laughs> Why? I'm not going to say that. Hold on. I could, hold tell, on I could give you an example. Sonny's weenie. I could give you an example. Hold on. I think that, I think you, how do I say this? It's almost like your attitude about women precedes you. Yeah. Like, it does because someone it, has to stand up for it. Back in, it's back in the nineties or here, here, listen to this. All of that. Do you remember that tomato soup thing that went on or whatever it was where they were saying like it was a salad the, the and then whatever tomatoes, something. Yeah. Some stupid yeah, the salad is the real deal. And tomatoes are women. Yeah. So, um, that all being when, said, yeah, well, women are tomatoes, men are sausage. <laughs> when all that, <laughs> when all that happened, um, I got very hyper, aware of it and i'm very very s like aware of sensitive very sensitive to it because it's real it's a real thing um but it's not it is and no it, it is okay what jack i had a booking <laughs> agent that accidentally put me on a, a thread an mm -hmm. email thread there was a two weekend festival and me and a male were headlining each Saturday night at nine o'clock, me and a guy, mm -hmm. the guy, I sell more tickets than him in the email. He was getting double what I got. And my booking agent literally said, cool, signed off on it. So I forwarded the entire email back to him and said, fuck you. Are you kidding me? Like, what are you doing? He's like, that's just what they offered. I was like, you didn't even, but you didn't even buck the system. You just said, okay, check. Here we go. Yeah. Give him this and give her this. Right. That is what I can't have. You at least have to go back to them and like give them statistics and say like, yeah. this is this, this is this. Well, I this. agree with that. I mean, I but, do agree with that. But that's happened to me. But, right, so, but you didn't allow it. No, I still had to do the festival. He made me do the festival. That's what I'm saying. For half the money that the other guy got double what I got. Like that is, un, that is not okay with me. No, it's, it's that's, not okay with anyone. So what I've always said is, you can have all these women, mo these movements, like you can have all these, you know, chicks with picks and all this stuff. You can have all that. But until the men that are our counterparts stand up for us, which that's where the problem will remain, because someone can't say, hey, Jack, I'll give you 50 grand to come do this show. And you go, I'm not doing it if Sonny can't do it. They'll go, fine, I'll go find someone else that's a male to do it. So until our male counterparts start standing up for us, that's the one thing that's going to actually affect anything. This is it. Because it's not going to be like the Sunday night special that plays us on radio. Well, let's play all women on Wednesday nights at midnight. What in the hell is that going to do for us? All right. Do you know what I mean? Well, I do. But like 
Serena Williams gets paid the same. Well, she's she's the Miranda. That's what I'm saying. Like there's the big, big artist and the big, big names. Once you surpass that one point, that's fine. But all the other artists are just considered like babies. Well, it also takes people like you consistently showing up well, and saying, hey, man. That's why I'm not giving up. That's not cool. I'm not giving up. Because you can't expect... Your your example, like you can't expect me to say, well, exactly. I'm not I'm not going to play unless Sonny gets paid that. It's Sonny that has to go. No. Yeah, but they'll I go deserve find, to get paid. But this. they'll go and find some another. If it's not okay, Jack, will you play this gig? No, I'm not going to do it because Sonny can't do it for this amount of money. Fine, we'll find someone else to replace you, Jack. And then if I say no, then they'll go. Cool, I'll go get so and so to do it for you know a hundred bucks. Do you know what I mean? Like. Yeah. So there's really like, it's kind of, it's either you have to, it, I have a bad attitude about it. And I know that because I'm sensitive to it's it. It's not a bad attitude. It's just an attitude. It's an aware attitude. Yeah. But I also know that. So he's woke. Yeah, I'm woke. <laughs> but I'm not going to, I've given in to the fact that, well, first of all, I'm not going to give, I'm not going to give up ever. That's just until my fucking last breath, I'm not giving up. Right. Um. Because I know that there's something to be proven, and I've got a lot of people to prove things to, including myself. Right. Um. So, um, I'm not ever going to give up. So I'm like a cockroach. Do you know what I mean? Like we all a, are in an apocalypse. Like yeah. I am a cockroach, like on my back, like kicking and screaming, and like being sprayed with like you know roach spray, and I'm still gonna make. There's it. your spray. Yeah. Oh. I love this stuff. It smells really good. <laughs> but anyway, so I'm like a cockroach and I will stand up for other women that have that attitude. Do you know what I mean? I don't I don't stand up for women that think things should be given to them. Right. You stand up for, for people that other are bad women at, that for, are busting their ass. Yeah. Um, there's this new band called Ragland. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a girl and her husband. Her name is Autumn and his name is Sam. And um they're great. I had them open a couple shows and um she's really, really good. Just great songwriter. And they asked me to um listen to this song. <laughs> it's called Throwing My Life Away. And I was like, Can I sing a verse on that on your record, please? It is like a women's anthem. It's out now. You should listen to it. It is exactly what is wrong with our world, with the music business, especially. Cause like if you say too much then you're a bitch. If you say too little, then you're a meek mouse and people can walk on you. If you have too much of an attitude, you're too hard to work with. But if you don't have attitude enough, then you're not cool enough. So there's like... I guess a lot of this to me is is kind of like um, explaining racism to somebody who's not a racist. Yeah. Because, I, because exactly. all the things that you're saying, I'm, you, I, you do I, not I come apply. back against because I'm like, eh, I don't feel that way. You don't apply. You do not apply because you are in this business. You're a fan of music like I am, but you're not the demographic that like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, because the the way you, the way you position it, it just sounds mean to me. Like I'm like, who would be people are who mean. would be that fucking mean? People are mean. <laughs> people are very mean, and this business is mean. But I mean, you also have to find joy. And like my mom always says, like you can't let one. Okay, I'll tell you the story. So in 2012, I got dropped from Big Machine. And uh, my birthday's in December. And I got dropped in July. And I told my mom, I use my mom as an example for everything because she's the only person that really 100% gets me. But I, I was like, I was like, I'm going to quit this business. I'm done with it. I hate it. It's evil. It's dirty. It's disgusting. I don't like the people in it. They walk all over you. I'm not, oh, I don't step on people. I just don't. If if it's if it's not meant to be, it's not meant to be. I'm not going to hurt someone else to be able to get ahead. It's just never going to happen. So anyway, I called her. I said, I'm, I'm quitting. I cannot do this anymore. She's like, okay, do me a favor. She's like, you need to get down on your knees and you need to pray because I know that this is what you're supposed to do. But if you ask God for a sign, like a visible undeniable, 100%, can't walk away from it sign, and you don't get that sign, then I will stand behind you and I will be proud of you no matter what you do. Mm -hmm. 
but you have to do this for me, please. And give yourself a time limit. So it was like the end of the year. And, you know, the music business shuts down in Nashville, like pretty much in November. Yeah. yeah. And so this was, um, this was first week of December. So we're already into the shut, you know, everything shut down. So I said, all right, cool. So I gave myself 14 days. And I said, I mean, I'm talking like I was praying, like I've never prayed. And I was like, hey, man, <laughs> 14 days, I need a sign. And like, if if you don't give me that, I'm quitting. So if you want me to use my talent that you gave me, you better come up with a plan, dude. That's what I said to God. And I was praying like hardcore. So on the 14th day morning, I called my mom and said, well, hope you're prepared. Today's the day. And she's like, fully understand whatever you need. I was like, she goes, I got your back. This is what I, if you did this truthfully, and this is what you've come to, I support you. Five o'clock, Bob Romeo from the ACMs, who I've never spoken to in my life, calls me, says that I've got an ACM nomination without a song on the radio, without a record deal, without anything. I lost my shit, okay? Like full on, full on lost my shit. Yeah. It's, well, that's a sign. It's literally never been nominated for anything in my life ever, especially music related. No songs on the radio in three years at the, or two years at that point. Mm-hmm. No record deal. I think I might be the only artist that ever has gotten a nomination from the ACMs that was without a record deal. <laughs> so That's pretty amazing. So that was in December of 2012. So now we're 10 years later. And still to this day, when, when things get hard and when I go, I hate everything, I want to quit. Then I always go back to that and go, I know this is what I'm supposed to be doing. So that is that day is why I will not give up. Mm -hmm. I will not give up. I, I am literally a cockroach. So I will continue for the rest of my life, even if it's the hardest thing I've ever done, because I absolutely I love my job. Right. You love your job. Yeah. No one would take away. No, no one can take this away from you. It's the one thing you can't. It's not a relationship. They can't take my they can't take my job. As long as I'm doing my job, no one can take it away from me. So what's going to be your focus from here on out? Like, is it just, is it the radio show and no, touring? It's and all of it. Touring. I mean, my goal is to, um, you know, I would love to do 2000 seat theaters. Like that's, that's kind of my goal. That's my goal in life. If I had one goal, I think that's a nice size, you know, room. That's a hell of a goal. Yeah. I mean, John Prine did that. But it's attainable. It's Lyle totally, it. yeah, it's totally attainable. It's not like I, I don't think I'm ever going to be an arena artist. Although I've played in plenty of arenas, you know, Bob Seeger had us out with him, Garth Brooks, Miranda. How many shows did you do with Garth? Probably like eight or nine. Um, then, that must have been pretty overwhelming. Yeah. Was it cool? Yeah. Pretty amazing. <laughs> pretty amazing. And the weird thing about it. Did you get to know him? Oh yeah, he's a great. Him and his wife are just amazing. Um, so Garth, this is weird. I'm from Longview, and Tyler is the place where we would go see shows. And so I asked my mom when I was like in eighth grade, "Mama, will you take me to see Garth Brooks?" And she's like, "Nope, this is the first show. I'm going to make you pay for your own ticket." I was like, "What? Pay for my own ticket? I don't even need money." She's like, "You're going to do chores." I was like, "Well, it's twelve dollars. I can't pay for a ticket for twelve dollars." What am I going to do for 12 bucks? Like, I, anyway, so yeah, that's the cost of a beer now. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> and so anyway, long story short, I ended up making the money and my mom took me and my friend Amanda over there and it's the best show I've ever been to. And we waited outside by the bus, which I know now Garth is long gone, but we waited out by his, what I know now is his crew bus for him to come, you know, get on his bus. And anyway, right. Full circle moment. Cause then I'm like, um, I was at their house just drinking wine with them one night. And, and I said, we were, I was about to do those shows. And I was like, you know, I'd love to be able to mention this on stage that, that you were the first concert I ever had to pay for a ticket for, but I've tried desperately to find what day it was. And I can't. And he goes, what town was it? And I said, Tyler at the oil palace. He goes, Oh, it's December 31st, 1991 or whatever. 
like whatever the date was, he just, he just rattled, rattled it off. Rattled it off. And I was like, are you serious? He goes, yeah. He has them all written down. That's fantastic. Yeah. So talk about loving your job. That dude loves his he job. He loves his and he loves his fans. You want yeah. to talk about getting some inspiration is watch them do a meet and greet. Because yeah. I know you've done meet and greets where you're just like, get me out of here. Not me. I love it. I, I no. <laughs> Jack, I've been in meet and greets with you. <laughs> um, but Garth will go into a room in an arena and shut the door and they have like a setup and they spend like quality time with people in an arena. They will take, I'm talking like those two. Yeah. They set the bar very, very high for any other artist. Yeah. Always Because they love their fans. I so used to much. think it was an act. I did too. Until I saw him. Me too. I really saw him do it. And I was like, oh my God. Mm hmm. <laughs> it's wild. It's wild. I've been so tired. I mean, you know, like when you're on a radio tour and you're just like delirious, mm -hmm. but you still have to go do those. Garth would be like, if he was on the radio tour and he was still going to do that, he would, I don't know how he does it, but he would make it where he didn't, you did not think he was tired. Whereas if I'm tired, I've got bags hanging off my face. You know what I mean? Like you look tired. Garth never looks tired. Well, you're not tired when you're inspired. Yeah, that's true. That's a good way to look at it. That was cute. I'm, I write songs. <laughs> <laughs> We've never even written a song, Jack. We should. I've asked you a million times. Will you set it up, Matt? A million and Do one. You, are you his wrangler? Kevin, this is Kevin's job. I'm going to have to ask Kevin. A million, million and one times. There you go. I'm Let's a cockroach. I'll keep asking. I'm a cockroach, too. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> You're a cockroach with hairspray, baby. <laughs> Do you know what? One time I had a tarantula in my house and I sprayed it with hairspray until my friend could come get it. <laughs> Cause, and it was just this tarantula moving like real slow. <laughs> I sprayed a whole can it's of it. It's all sticky. Because <laughs> I didn't want to kill it. But I also didn't want to like have it run around my house. So I just sprayed it with hairspray and it got real sticky. And it was just like. <laughs> <laughs> That's you. you Talk to Mary Morris at all. No, I've actually never really talked to her. I mean, when she was young. Yeah, y'all would have a great conversation about gender equality and all that fun stuff. Really? Hey, teach their own. Did she get into that? Oh, yeah. And I won't. It's not even. <laughs> well, the whole thing about the pay gap in music is, that's interesting because it's, it all has to do with ticket prices and how many people show up. It's, I know. There's not. I know. I know. It's not an opinion. I understand that, but. But also, the only way to make a change is to make a change. Yeah. So people like what they're exposed to. Same as country radio. If they put my music on country radio, people would like it in, you know, masses. People would like your music in masses if it is on the radio. But if it's because it's easy to. But there's also a thing about music. I learned this firsthand is that, you know, I had a number one, number one song. If it connects, it connects. Right. And if it doesn't, you could play it a thousand times and people could say, yeah, I like that. Yep. But what's going to make them come see you play, go buy a record, go buy a t-shirt? Because I but couldn't, I have, I couldn't songs... have gotten any more exposure than I did and it never really popped the way. Well, but I have songs that connect that are independently released that I know if they were released mass to the masses, it would be a different story. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just a lot of it has to do with you know, luck, a lot of it has to do with meeting the right people. A lot of it has to do with relationships. A lot of it has to do with resilience. A lot of it has to do with, it has to do with a lot of different things. It's not just one thing. That's right. And it has to be good music. Do you know what I mean? But a lot of people get chances that other people don't get. And, and I feel like if, if the, cause there is a problem, there is a problem with the women thing. And I am yeah. here for it. Yeah. I am here for it. Well, but, that's just, that's kind of what I've been trying to say this whole time is that you are the change. Well, I mean, bring it on. That's how it works. I hope so. And Something it, has got to, to change or just give in to the fact that like, I'm, I'm okay with what I am doing right now. If this is the level I stay at for literally the rest of my life, I am paying my rent. I am, I have a car. I have nice things. You know, I have what I need in life. Right. I have the 
most amazing fans literally that have ever existed. And I will fight someone on that. Everyone thinks they have the uh, best nobody, fans. Nobody, I don't want to fight you. No, no. <laughs> I'm actually just all talk. I'm like a dog that barks. But do you know what Chasing I mean? Chasing tires. Yes. But like, but these people kept us alive during COVID. They kept me in my house during COVID. Yeah. You know? So anyway, I, I'm fine with exactly where I'm at if this is all that I ever achieve. But I really feel like there's more out there. Well, it's, it's, it's in your body language. It's in your, it's, it's right here. You know, it's, it's amazing to me. I've known you, we've known each other 20 years, at least. But I'm only 27. Yeah. You've known you me were since a cute, I was you seven. Were a cute little, you were a cute little kid. <laughs> I really have known you since I was like 15 or yeah. 16. That is, no. Jack, when was your first show? I'm not Garth Brooks. No. When was your show? When when did you play in Waco on the bridge? Oh God! On the bridge. Yes, uh, was that Margaritaville? No, that it was, was like a fr it was like a big bridge. frat party. Yeah, I was at that. I remember that. When was that? That's the first time I saw you. That would have been ninety. Jesus, ninety five. Yeah. Something like that. Because I was there visiting friends that were in college. I was still in high school. Mm hmm. Cockroach, tell ya. I remember you. <laughs> Damn old, you big old cockroach. <laughs> um, so I want to cover Biloxi, by the way. Please. I, just, oh. I freaking love that song <clears throat> so much. Cover it. Nobody ever has. I love it so much. I want to do it with a piano. I was just listening to uh, Phil like Hank Williams tonight. That's great. You know it's Chris Wall's song? Of course. God. God bless his heart. Did you, you just... Know, Ask me if I knew that was a Chris Wall song. <laughs> oh boy. That's well, I was just noise. asking. That's my noise. He's, I mean, he's, he's like my hero. Chris Craig was fantastic. He was fantastic. He's yeah. like literally my hero on this planet. The and coordination was probably one of the best records. Ever. Absolutely. Is that the one with Reckless Kelly? No. No, that's that Tainted one. Angel. Tainted Angel. I love that record. But the coordination. I walked down, 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 down. Such a great style. Cowboy. Yeah, man. So, God, so that song. Um, he was so bitter. God, he was so bitter. I don't, totally. I'm not sure if he was that bitter or. He, yeah, he was bitter. He was bitter. He, he had. He was so nervous, though, too. He had serious demons and. Yeah. It came off his bitterness. Oh, absolutely. And, but also, he lit a fire under my ass more than a couple times, you know, to prove people wrong. And, and I trust him musically, like song wise, especially. And I realized the other day, this is the first album that I'll ever make that, that I can't send to him for an opinion, yeah, which so. broke my heart. But when I met him at the spoke, like 150 years ago, he played um, that song. And I said afterwards, I said, oh, if I ever get in a band, I'm going to cover that song. And he's like, oh, sure you are, you little blonde. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and so years go by and we became friends and all that. And um, I finally recorded that in 2017. And um, Feel like I ain't Williams? Mm -hmm. and, and he knew I recorded it, but then I called him when I was walking on stage at the Opry to sing it. And I said, um, I said, I know that you know I recorded this but you might want to turn on WSM online right now because I'm fixing to sing it on the Opry. And he started crying. Yeah. It's the only time I've ever seen emotion out of him besides rage. Do you I know it? Like, I loved him. I saw him cry to at four o'clock in the morning in his house after being out all night listening to choice, George Jones choices. Oh my God. So just, you got to feel him sing. That's so Jesus good. God, I loved oh. him. Shit. Sonny, we have to officially wrap this up. I love you. Love you back. I'm, pr I'm proud of you. Thank you. I'm proud of you, and I love your place. It's Thank awesome. You. Yeah, but you've been killing it. I'm really happy for you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Let's write a song. Okay, you have that in writing, Matt. I do. I have that writing. I got a video. Oh, it's even better. Two cockroaches. We're going to have Cheers. alter egos. Bye. <laughs>